What it do, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to episode 57 of the Access of Combat podcast. We're here to break down UFC fight night happening in Louisville, Kentucky. Immovol versus Cannoneer. I'm one of your co-hosts, Ray, Ray Boogie. Ray, you're from the AO. My co-host. Who go the boss? Who go got next? Who go representing Purple City Bird Gang? Purple Haze, you already know. Team Purple on this podcast. And before we get into any of that business, you already know the deal. Like, comment, subscribe, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Everybody enjoying these visuals right now. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay up to date. And for all of our audio listeners, Spotify, Apple, Google Podcast, you already know. Kicking off the prelims for Louisville, Kentucky, we got Andrea Lee, KGB, going one-on-one with Montana Dolorosa. Lee, 13-9, and fighting out of Louisiana, 35 years old. Montana, fighting out of Arlington, Texas, 12-9-1, 29 years old. Uh, this is a run back from five years ago where Andrea... Beat her by unanimous decision. I think a lot has changed in five years. I think Andrea Lee has lost not just a step, but I think a step and a half. Her last fight was against Miranda Maverick. I bet Andrea to beat her ass. She did not. Uh, De La Rosa. Also bet De La Rosa to beat her last fight. And that was J.J. Aldridge, I think, if I remember correctly. Yes. Also lost that fight. No, actually, yeah, it was J.J. Aldridge. She, she fought Jillian Robinson in a, Robinson in a grappling match. Uh, give me De La Rosa to win the re, the rematch here. I mean, De, De La Rosa was like 23, 24 at the time when they first fought. It might have been one of her f- first fights in the UFC, if I'm not mistaken. I just like De La Rosa to get to the wrestling here and probably even look better in the striking because her striking has improved. I can't bet... If I knew... Lee was on maybe gear. I'd probably better that way, but I'm going to stick with De La Rosa here. What about you? Yeah, I'm with you here. And um, it, it Andrea Lee has fought the better brand of competition outside of Tatiana Suarez. Um, I thought Andrea Lee beat Macy Barber. I thought that was a robbing. She fought Natalia Silva, took a pummeling in that fight. The most alarming loss was definitely the Miranda Maverick fight. And I think Miranda Maverick, I think we've kind of seen her ceiling at this point. I don't think she's all that good, to be frank. It's unfortunate because there were high expectations for her. But I do feel like Montana has made improvements, more improvements than Andrea over the last couple of years. And I also feel like Montana not only is going to be the bigger girl, she's the more physical girl, and she's going to be the younger girl here. Um, I think I can see her kind of controlling her in the clinch making it a dirty fight. Kind of the same way Macy kind of did to her. Macy Barber kind of did Montana the same way, kind of just bullied her. I feel like Montana could bully her in certain positions here. It's not a fight that I have a lot of interest betting on because I think this is a low-level fight, in my opinion, just on the Montana side. Andrea is just a little, a a few steps behind with her age and damage at this point. I'm going to leave Montana, not with the best bit of confidence, but... For the, for the reasons listed, I, I just I just think Andrea's washed a little bit here. She's a little rinsed. I, I hate to say it because I, I do think she's probably one of the more well-rounded fighters that we had, especially towards the inception of women's MMA in the UFC. Good grappling, good striking, wrestling's underrated, but I, I just feel like Montana's going to get her lick back in this fight. So give me Montana's the lean. Next fight on the prelims at men's bantamweight, we got Daniel Marcos Soncora going one on one with the sexy Mexi John Castaneda. Marcos, perfect. 15 and 0. Fighting out of Peru, hailing from Peru, 31 years old. Castaneda, 26, no, 21 and 6. Fighting out of Minneapolis, Minnesota, 32 years old. Tough fight to call. Tough fight. Um, the line, what's the line on this fight? It is 115 Daniel Marcos. And the comeback? Minus 105, it's a pick him. Marcos was a dog at one point. Is the better striker in my opinion. By uh, far. But 100%. This fight pretty much comes down to, can Castaneda hold Marcos down? I think he should be able to get the takedowns. Because I think Castaneda's takedowns are decent. If he decides to stand with Marcos, I think that's a bad idea. I think he gets beat up. He might, I agree. might even get knocked out. 
Can Castaneda hold him down? Can Castaneda get to his back? Can Castaneda get his sub game going? Castaneda is probably the pick here. Agreed. But if you're asking me who I think the better fighter is, and I won't be surprised if he wins, I think Marcos is the better fighter. Give me Castaneda with not the most confidence here. Man, I think Marcos might be, I don't know. This is probably Dorga Pass. What about you? This is a tough fight to call. Um, Castaneda, he 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 can he has the cap- he has wrestling capabilities. Let's just put it that way. I'm not a big fan of how he uses his wrestling. I think he needs to work to get to your back. He is pretty good at that, which is why I am going to lean him in this fight as well for control. As well as I think this is the best fighter that Daniel Marcus has fought outside of Davy Grant. Um, that, that speaking on that, Daniel Marcus lost that fight, barely threw any punches, and just walked forward and took damage. And I don't know how he got awarded the decision, but. That's beyond me. I think uh, John Castaneda is going to be able to control him. But if John Castaneda, who does have the tendency to stand with the guy he's fighting, stands with Marcos, he's going to get lit up. Uh, Marcos, the only thing I don't like about Marcos is striking. He does overextend a little bit. And in his contender series fight, he was off for three years. And that was the last time he's been taken down. And not really taken down. He was not really even controlled, to be frank for very long so I, I i'm gonna lean castaneda but come fight time this might be a little bit of a switch pick to be frank because i do like marcos's skill he has 89 percent takedown defense he's big he's lanky for the division and castaneda he's not that big for the division to be frank not relative to marcos and as i've told you guys on multiple occasions when you have a wrestler wrestling into a lanky guy who has decent takedown defense it is a situation where you feel like you're picking them up and they're never leaving the floor. I'm going to lean Castaneda, not another fight. I think this is a properly aligned fight for a lot of reasons because I think there's a lot of questions on both sides. Not sure how I'm going to bet this, but I do like Castaneda as the lean for now. Next fight on the prelims at men's welterweight, we got Charlie Rat- Raddick? Racky. Racky. Chuck Buffalo. <clears throat> Going one on one with the horrible fight with the nightmare Carlos Prates, terrible nickname, terrible fighter. Racky, <laughs> nine and three, fighting out of Salem, Wisconsin, thirty three years old. The nightmare Prada, I'm Prada. Prates. Prates, eighteen and six, fighting out of Brazil, hailing from Brazil, thirty years old. Off the off the rip, I think this fight probably doesn't go to distance. Agreed. Uh, this is a fight where I think if. Racky could do what he did to Blood Diamond and basically just relentlessly wrestle. Don't let Protes get any kind of his offensive striking going. He could probably win this fight. Rocky, Racky's, all his losses are at lightweight. Protes, he's one of those guys where I think he's uber talented and I'm in love with his striking and he's definitely got the power. But um, the Trevin Giles fight was a little bit of a sweat because he was... I guess arguably losing that fight, in my opinion, until he wasn't. And then when he wasn't, he really wasn't because he, he put him out. I'm going to lean Prates here, but not with the most confidence. What about you? I'm leaning Prates when I'm leaning Prates a little more, more confidence than you. I think he's going to light this dude up. I don't think Racky's very good. I think um, he has to relentlessly wrestle into him as you said but i don't think blood diamond has the footwork that this guy has i don't think blood diamond and from an mma standpoint knows how to manage distance the same way protest does and i think protest he usually gives away the only thing that worries me about this fight for protest and this will probably reel me back a little bit is that protest is a slow starter he kind of downloads information the first round so he might drop the first round he did the same thing against mitch ramirez he kind of did the same thing in his last fight that's where there's some cause for concern but I just think, I don't think Racky's very good, man. I just don't think Racky's going to be the guy to do it. I, I, I think the line's a little crazy because they got Protest at minus 198 and Racky at plus 160. I think that's a little a little off. I, I would like to see Protest more at like maybe 160, 170. Racky at like maybe plus 140, 130. I think that line makes a little more sense. But I don't know if there's enough juice there for me to lay money on Racky because I'm not very high on his skill. So what if you believe Blood Diamond? Blood Diamond is shit. Let's just let's he's a shit fighter. And from an MMA standpoint, his striking is not even that good. I don't even know where his world renowned kickboxing's from. Like, you've seen all his fights, like his striking is ass. Like it's cheeks. 
the, 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 the sweaty cheeks too. Not like, you know, the sweaty cheeks when you're prepping to take a shit. <laughs> like, like bad ass cheeks. <laughs> Unshaved ass cheeks. <laughs> like, he's ass. Like, so I, like, if we're going off of that for Racky, I don't know. I, I just, I, I think Prat is probably going to knock him out. That's just my hunch. So Prates is the lean. Not sure how I'm going to bet it. Like this, this, yeah, this fight might be a stay away for, a, for just because of the line, but we'll see. Next fight on the prelims at men's lightweight. We got Tiago Moises going one-on-one with Mr. Highlight Ludovic Klein. Moises, 18-7 fighting out of Brazil, hailing from Brazil, 29 years old. Klein, 21-4-1 fighting out of Slovakia, 29 years old. This this is a good. This is probably one of the better fights on this card. Very hard to call. Uh, very closely. Good matchmaking. Yes. Uh, I think what this boiled down. What's what this is going to boil down to is essentially who's going to pressure and make the other guy uncomfortable because that's how both of these guys kind of lose. Moises has obviously got more of the uh, UFC experience, so you can see that. I mean, his last what was his, his last loss was to Benoit, right? Yeah. Before that, and I, he had his moments in that fight. He he just doesn't deal well with people who just straight fucking disrespect him. Correct. Just walk him down, mix it up, mix it in. Can Klein be that guy? He can be that guy, but this is by far Klein's best opponent. What gives me a little hesitation is his fight against. Uh, Landwehr, where Landwehr did exactly that to him. Straight up disrespect. That was probably one of the best. That was probably peak Landwehr. He just walked him down, straight up disrespected Klein's power, made Klein shoot sloppy, and was able to get, I think it was an Anaconda or a Darce yeah. in the third round. I think Moises is going to be the side for me here. Not with the most confidence, and I think it, it just boils down to two things. I think I don't know how Klein is going to be able to deal with Moises's uh, leg kicks, and not only his leg kicks, but I think if they do get to the grappling, Moises is filthy. His jujitsu is top tier, and I've seen Klein not only almost die to uh, to um, Landwehr, but he almost died to Trezano in the third round as well. He won that fight, but that third round, he almost did die. I think Moises is side here for me. What about you? Um, this fight comes down to not only what you said, but do you think Ludovic Klein is a an elite top 10, top 15 fighter? Um, if you look at how Moises has handled who he's supposed to handle, he fucking handles him. If you look at him against elite level competition, Benoit St. Denis, Islam Makachev, and even Joel Alvarez, who I think is... A fucking hammer, low key. He gets he gets hammered. He's good at being a hammer. He's not very good at being a nail. The question you have to ask yourself is: Do you think Ludovic Klein is capable of being a good hammer? Do you think he is a top tier fighter? I don't know if he's a top tier fighter, but I this is matchmaking greatness in my opinion because this is one of the I think this is one of the harder fights to call on this card. I think Ludovic can be that guy. And can put Moises in positions, which he has looked in the past, where if you put him in bad positions where he can't bully you, he's going to look for the fucking door. With that said, I agree with you. If you look at the track record with Trezano, who I'm also not very high on, if you look at um, his other loss as well, the one that you had mentioned, uh, Nate Landwehr, I think Nate is a good fighter. I don't think he's a great fighter. I'm going to lean Moises. But what I will say is, I think Klein is kind of finding his stride at this mo- moment. He's on a four-fight win streak. Those fights were four, fi- four to five fights ago. If I switch sides here, I, I don't be surprised if I do. I think this is something I want to sit on, wait till fight week, see how the line shakes out, and then figure it out. I think he is hitting his stride. If you're asking me, I think Klein's going to be the more physical fighter, even though he is giving up two inches in height here. He has a two-inch reach advantage to a little over two-inch reach advantage, but I feel I feel like Moises is gonna figure out a way to deal with this, and I think predominantly behind the leg kicks. And what is Ludovic gonna take him down? His Moises' jujitsu is lights out, lights out jujitsu, 
And if Trezano could find you, I think Moises can definitely find you. Plus, Moises is very good at getting to the back. Give me Moises. Not, I'm not sure how I'm going to bet it, but I, I, Moises is definitely in. Next fight in the prelims at men's bantamweight, we have Superman Brad Katona going one on one with Jesse Butler. Horrible fighter. <laughs> Katona, 13 and 3 overall, fighting out of uh, Dublin, Ireland, repping Canada, 32 years old. Jesse Butler, 12 and 5 overall, fighting out of West Monroe, Louisiana, 32 years old. The last time we seen Jesse Butler. Uh, he got the master blaster from Jim Miller. 20 seconds into the fight. He's ass, bro. What a debut. I don't think he's ass. He's ass. Um, I think he might actually kind of bring the fight to Katona here. This is why. One, Butler's fought at lightweight slash featherweight for literally his whole career. He's coming down to bantamweight to fight Katona. A small bantamweight. A small bantamweight. Uh, Jesse Butler's game plan for the most part is to kind of just grapple the shit out of you. He's got heavy hands. He's going to have the size advantage here, but I think Katona where he can exploit him is essentially wrestling one in the IQ because I think Katona is just a smart fighter. Correct. Two in the striking because I think Katona is going to have the speed advantage and I think he just has the better overall striking and three there is no three. I made that up. I think I think I think Brad's <laughs> gonna be able to exploit his wrestling a little bit. Because if you look at who Jesse's fought, it's not really. Yeah, I. I it's not blowing my. It's not. I'm bald, but it's not blowing my fucking hair back, man. It's it's more of a physicality thing that kind of worries me. But I am gonna lean Katona here to win. This is also a fight you might want to wait till he gets on the scale, man. Yeah, you want to see how he looks? Don't know if he's gonna make bantamweight, weight to be honest. So yeah, what I will say is if he looks good. You, he's not, he's not terrible for a dog shot just because of the size. Brad Katona right now is a minus five hundred. I'm not sure that's a that's a good line. Like yeah. I, the thing is, Jesse, the thing is, they're just rating Jesse's skill, and and this is why I think Brad probably gonna rinse him, and this is why he's my lean as well. It's Jesse's ass, in my opinion, man. I don't think he's that good. I don't think he's completely ass, but I think we're about to find out how ass he really is after this fight, to be honest. If the, if this fight even happens. I mean, granted, it is it is Brad Katona. Like, I don't think Brad is a bad fighter. I think this dude should never have been cut from the UFC. He he goes to decision, but he does bring it, man. Like he he knows angles, he understands angles. He either Jesse's gonna shock a lot of people. This is how this fight's gonna go. Either Brad's gonna fucking ste- dog walk him, or Jesse's gonna surprise a lot of people. That's what's going to happen, in my opinion. I don't think this fight, it's going to be one way or the other. I don't think it's going to be close. Yeah, give me Brad, though. Give me Brad, just just because I think he's just a way better fighter. Next fight on the prelims, men's bantamweight. We got Cody Stamen, the Spartan, going one-on-one with double impact. Tyler Lapilus. This is a great fight. This is a very good fight. Stamen, 21-6-1, fighting out of Sparta, Michigan, 34 years old. Lapilus, 19 and 4, fighting out of France, hailing from France, 32 years old. Lapilus is a guy who I think should have never been cut from the UFC. He only got cut because I guess he's deemed quote unquote boring. He doesn't really finish his fights. He's got the French kickboxing style about him. Solid takedown defense, a little low volume, more of a counter striker. Stamen, who, to be honest, I'm surprised he's fighting at Bantamweight again because I feel like in his last fight, I think it was a catchweight fight, he really sounded like he didn't want to come down to this weight class anymore. Agreed. Uh, That being said, I think Stamen is 100% the best wrestler Lapilus has fought. Uh, Lapilus' last um, fight against Basharat was a little bit of an eye opener only because Basharat would not only was able to take him down, was able to take him down like about five, six times. I will. You yeah. Know? And ba- and Basharat's like open mat wrestling is not Cody Stamens, in no. my opinion. He's good with like inside trips. He knows how to, you know, move your body to get you down off the body lock. Yes. And it my thing is Stamen can do both. 
Stamen's really good, actually. I think he's wild slept on. Now it's the the only so what what this fight boils that boils down to essentially is can Stamen get around basically his nine inch reach deficit? I think so. I feel like Stamen's always fighting someone with longer reach than him. Stamen, I think you're not wrong. So like you know <laughs> he's beaten like even even the last fight with Douglas De Silva and Drach, that fight was fucking close. That even, fight arguably probably should have been um, a draw. A draw or no contest because the referee really fucked up in the first round. He took a point, didn't he? No. So what happened was um, he got illegally um, up kicked on on the feet. The referee not only didn't, the referee not only decided just to warn the guy and then take away Stamen's position entirely. And Stamen looked at the guy like, "Are you fucking dumb?" I remember that. I remember that. And it took a lot for him because it was the it was probably one of the dumbest things I think I've ever seen. (laughs) Like, if you're going to stand the guy up, at least take a fucking point. Correct. If you're not going to take a point, give him back the position. Correct. Because Stamen worked hard for that position, got him down, and was working him down there. Yeah. That being said, I think Stamen can get to Lapulus here. I think Stamen is probably going to be able to successfully chain wrestle and Win control. Minutes. Yeah. I think he's live, and I think he's live. Stamen also underrated hands. Yes. He doesn't have that many knockouts. I don't think he even has any knockouts in the UFC. He's but hurt he, a lot of dudes. But he thumps. Yeah, he's hurt a lot of dudes he in his thumps. fights. And and I would and I if you're asking me, I think Lapulus is a very good fighter. And if I knew that he would be a little more high volume. Correct. I'd pick him. You know, and not such a, you know, just kind of wait and retreat kind of like I'd pick him. I yeah. think he'd be the side. But give me give me Stamen here. That's that's the that's the side I like for this fight. I feel like the Stamen line alone justifies him p- picking him. He's plus one sixty. Yeah, that's not bad. That is insane. I like that fight this fight is another one that should be a little more closely lined. I I, I think Stamen presents a lot of problems for Lapalus. And Stamen can go three rounds. Hard. You know what I'm saying? Hey yo, pause. No Diddy. <laughs> no Diddler. You feel me? No diddler. No diddler. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we can't run on CNN. Purple City Gay Prayer Gag. You already know what it is. <laughs> but I think Stamen presents a lot of problems to him. Lapalus, too, too low volume, as my brother said. Fights too much against the cage. And, I mean, and even even Lockney, he was able to pick him apart. But Lockney is not the wrestler that Stamen is. He's no. a good grappler. Yes. He might be like at the same part with the grappling. Very strong. But I think Stamen's ability to put it all together. Give me, give me Stamen as a dog shot here. <laughs> Next fight on the prelims at Women's Strawweight. We have a debuting Punja Turmar, the Cyclone, going one-on-one with... Oh, man, I forgot how they say her, her name. It's not Renee. Rayanne? No, it's like... Oh, man. it's Just say Amanda. How do you say how do you say the R in Brazil? It's like... Hi, oh, it's Hayani. Hayani, yeah. Hayani Amanda. Uh, Tumar. I don't know why I'm saying it like that. Tumar, Tumar. I mean, she's Indian. So, Tumar. The Cyclone. Okay. <laughs> Eight and four, fighting out of India, 30 years old. Amanda, 14, 7, and 0. Oh. Fighting out of Brazil, hailing from Brazil, 29 years old. Punja is officially the first Indian woman to be signed to the UFC. I'm kind of excited. Uh, she comes, she has like a kickboxing background, but it's not necessarily kickboxing. It's a, definitely a striking background, but it's a wushu background. Ooh, sure. which, <laughs> which basically from what I could I mean listen I didn't look it up I probably should have but from what I could um, gather gather right it's they almost use more uh, leg kicks as jabs and like it it's a lot of a lot of uh, heavy kicking game involved it shows in her game too yes she she's a she's a decent striker. She's and, decent. And I think when she gets on top, she's got decent ground and pound. The problem with her is that she don't know how to defend a sub. Now to her credit, I've heard some interviews with her where she went and she knows that because her only three losses are by submission. Well, she has four losses, but three of them by submission. And I think one was a decision, if I'm not mistaken. No, nope, one was a KO. But the KO was, I think I mean she the KO was against fucking Stamp Fairtex, and I mean, Fairtex is a beast. Yeah. They're, they're building that girl over there at one. She's named after the after the Muay Thai. She's named after the fucking Muay Thai. I meant to ask you that. The like, Muay Thai is, padding, is, bro. Is she actually, like, is that? It might be a nickname. 
Is that her nickname or is she like fucking like lineage? Like she's like royalty? Who knows? To the, to the, I, to the I, kick pad game? I'm curious. Yeah. So I, I, I'm not going to comment on it, but that is. But she's good. And she's really good. She's one of the best probably prospects that uh, that one championship has over there in Japan. Correct. But coming back to Punjar here. Punjar Tumar. I don't know. I keep saying it like that. Yeah. I just, you know. Yeah, not you. you. It rolls up to, I mean, that's the proper way to say it, you know. Yeah, go ahead. I like Indian food too. <laughs> it's spicy. It gives me heartburn. <laughs> uh, what was I saying? Tumar, she uh, she's acknowledged that you know sub defense is her weakness, and she went and actually started like going to a was it, what do they call it the ace the ADCC yeah you know trying to really step up and improve her grappling and shit. Uh, when it comes to Hayani Amanda here. I think she's got the tools, but the IQ is just questionable. She made her contender series debut against Denise, Denise Gomez. Which is, there's no shame in losing to her, man. No, but what I do recall in that fight is that she did have success grappling her, but then just completely abandoned it because I think she just kind of fell in love with just striking. And you don't want to strike with Gomez. No. You want to take down Gomez. You don't want to strike with this girl either. I'm I'm gonna favor her because I think she's got the tools to win this fight. But at plus at minus two thirty eight. But you can't back her at like that's yeah. crazy against a girl crazy. with super high volume. And I and I get it. Like Tumar's from India, and they don't really have the most extensive like MMA. You know, people gyms. that fight over there, gyms, coaching. I mean, listen, she's fucking the first person that I know is practicing wushu in MMA. I never even heard of fucking Wu Shu until literally this week. I agree. It sounds like a topping on my food. It sounds like something I, I order with my pork fried rice. Oh, with a little bit of Wu Shu. <laughs> you feel me? No disrespect, but I'm going to lean. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to lean Amanda to win this, but I'm not going to pick her, obviously. I think it's probably Dogger Pass. <laughs> Agreed. Next fight on the card, also at women's strawweight, we got Eduara Mora going one on one with the aforementioned Denise Gomez Gomez uh, Mora, aka Ronda, boring ass nickname. <sighs> Perfect, ten and zero, fighting out of Brazil, hailing from Brazil, thirty years old. Denise. Oh, Oh, get ready to hit that one again because nah, nah. Denise Gomez's nickname is D. Oh, brother, <laughs> this guy stinks! Also hailing from Brazil, fighting out of Brazil, 8-3 overall, 24 years old. That old brother, they stink, is particularly their nicknames. Their skill is fantastic. Oh, no, this fight is going to... Like, okay. I, I hate this fight because I think I like Gomes and I feel like they keep feeding her to the dogs. Loki, it fucking bothers me. I'm leaning. I'm gonna lean Gomes here, and I'm gonna lean Gomes here because, listen, I I, I like Mora. <laughs> this is a, like an unconventional. Not this is not super binary, but it's it's kind of binary because Mora, she her game is to get you down and beat the fucking shit out of you, and you're either gonna tap to tap to submissions or you're gonna just get you know ground and pounded the fuck out. That's her game. Correct. Gomes dumps, man. Gomes, her her game plan is like she's basically pressure. I yeah. don't want to say because even like even saying like Dollar Tree on draw is like disrespectful, but like she's a, she's of that same kind of like cut. Uh, yes, like when you're cutting like boar's head ham, she's from that same boar's head piece of meat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna roll with that one because I, I didn't have anything better. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, you, I, people say cut from the same cloth too much. So I was like, you know what? We're, we're chopping it up at the deli. Cut from the same spice ham. At la bodega, you know what I'm saying? Like she's from the same spice ham. She's from the same spice. <laughs> the one with the big pig on it. You know what I'm saying? Low sodium. You know what I'm saying, yeah, looking out for your, you know, looking out for the health. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but listen, Gomes, she just wants to stand and bang. She's got uh, jujitsu. She does. What she doesn't have is takedown defense. Yes. She can be taken now. She was getting, when when you're getting, I mean, nothing against uh, Luma Lugbumi. I love her. But when Luma Lugbumi is taking you down at will, and Luma Lugbumi is just straight up Muay Thai, up and down. 
Uh, it's a problem. So this fight, in my opinion, is probably not going to go to distance. I think somebody's going to get finished. I don't know who gets finished. I'm going to lean Gomez to win. And the reason why I'm leaning Gomez to win is because all these fights start standing. I think she could um, survive on the ground, at least not get submitted immediately. Because I, th I think Gomez is more than kind of capable on the ground. But the problem with Mora is she leaves her chin straight the fuck up and is very hittable. She does not move her head at all. So while this fight is taking place on its feet, I think Mora can get cleaned, cleaned out. And I know she got brought in by Almeida. Yes. Like I, I know Almeida is like her big, like, um, a big I brother guess sponsor or just, you know, like she was a big advocate for her big brother. No government interference. They you know almost I mean? fight the same exact way. She's like the female Almeida. Yeah. So, if she can't get Gomez down and, and rinse her ass, I think she's going to get rinsed on the feet. So give me Gomez here. But in terms of a bet, what I'm going to be looking at is probably fight doesn't go. Correct. All the unders. And this is a women's fight, but I just got a feeling. Yeah, I'm on Mora here. Um, I'm on the opposite side of you. And okay. the reason being is because Denise is giving up four inches in size and three inches in reach to a girl who is physically very strong. Mora is very strong. I know she rents Montserrat, who's like tiny for the division. I don't even hate that. I, I don't, I don't, I'm not. She did what she was supposed to do in that fight. Because another. The no. contender series fight was the impressive one. But, but not even because uh, you're right. Uh, Mora, she's big. She's big, man. The, the, then the two people I've seen her fight, small as hell. And Denise is not big either. And Denise, you're right. I didn't even think about that. She, yeah, this is, this is, the, I don't hate the Denise play because she, she has put away girls that like should beat her. Yeah. Let's be frank. I, I hate this fight because I like Denise. I think Denise I, I, for me is just a better overall fighter. So yes. I'm just going to, I'm, I'm going to lean just like skills, pay the bills. She's got, you know, more of the UFC experience and as she like, you know, again, if depending, this is mixed martial arts. Like if it was this, if this was a straight jujitsu match. I think Mora all day. I just think Mora is going to be able to get her down with the wrestling. Yes. I think she's going to be able to bully her. I think she's going to get it to her back. And I, I think Denise will play off her back. And this is a girl that you cannot allow yourself to get taken. You beat her by not getting taken down, in my opinion. And I think in more times than not, Mora is going to get us to the floor. So Mora, she might not finish her. She, I think this is going to go to the decision because Denise, you know, in New York, when, when someone's a pussy, we say we can see the bitch in them. We don't see the bitch in Denise Gomes no. on this podcast. We acknowledge this girl. And I hate that she's consistently getting thrown to the wolves. I hate the UFC matchmaking for her. I love that she accepts tough fights, but I think this girl can be a potential star because she has a look. She fucking knocks bitches out. Let's just be frank. And I hate this fight for her, but I got to go Mora. Next fight. And it looks like this is the... I mean, as currently constituted, it's going to kick off the main card. At men's bantamweight, we got a matchup that should have happened several months ago in UFC Mexico. We have Raul Ruz Rosas Jr. Horrible. <laughs> that, that is a suspect. Come I on. don't give a shit. El Nino Problema. Going one-on-one -on -one with Pretty Ricky, Ricky Tercios. Horrible. <laughs> Rosas, <laughs> eight and one, fighting out of Santa Rosa, California. Nineteen years old, pretty Ricky Ricky Tercios, twelve and three overall, fighting out of Houston, Texas. Thirty-one years old. When this fight was supposed to originally happen in Mexico, that was on the uh, Moreno Roy Val card, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I initially leaned Rosas, but Rosas early, because as we know. As uh, C Rod was able to uh, demonstrate, my man has cardio problems. Very bad cardio problems. Now that this is taking place in fucking Kentucky, which I I don't even know. I'm I'm assuming Kentucky's at sea level here. Yeah, not at altitude. And this is sure. several months later, so I mean, Rosas has probably had nothing to do but just prepare for this guy. I'm still gonna lean Rosas here to win. Um, I'm gonna lean Rosas probably to get. The win in the first two rounds, I'm gonna balls it. I mean, listen, 
if he wins by decision, I won't be that surprised because Tercios is tough. He's one of those squirmy guys you don't want to really kind of grapple with. But his takedown defense is shit, it, man. It, exactly. You can take him down so easily. Augusta winning, he does the chicken dance to the floor. <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's terrible. It's, I don't understand how you are the UFC level and you have th this bad takedown defense. I'm yes. sorry. It, uh, it's inexcusable. This is a fight that Raul Rosa should win. Yes. Now, will I lay minus 250 on this dude? No. Just like my brother? Probably not. No. Not, not, not at all, actually. You play value bets on this fight. You play round one, Rosas, round two, Rosas, or round two, one, round one, two combination, probably by sub, because I don't think he's knocking Tercios out because Tercios has a great chin. I mean, I also, uh, again, now that I think about it, maybe, I mean, now that I think about it more, maybe the, the decision is probably live. Maybe Rosas is probably more of a parlay piece, if I if I say. I don't know, because Tercios, even though he doesn't really stop people, I could see him stopping this kid. I really could, because he, his cardio shit, his cardio is absolute dog shit. The problem and is you don't need to breathe. And then you can still take this man down. You see what I'm saying? I agree, but the thing <laughs> is, you see Raul like crumble in fights. Didn't throw any strikes in the second or third round, if I'm correct, of the um, Christian C Rod, the C yeah. Rod fight. C Rod's good. C Rod beats both of these guys, in my opinion. But 100. percent I just feel like there's this value in Tercios late. I really do. I'm gonna lean Raul because he should win this fight. This is UFC matchmaking at his best to get a, a guy they want out front, but. If Tercio stopped him or won the decision via split, would I be mad? Now, am I going to bet the decision? No, I'm probably going to just bet Tercio's third round. Because the way UFC judging has been lately, the check is going to clear and Raul is going to get the decision even if he lost the fight. Because I'm just being honest with you guys. And that's It's unfortunate that we're there, but especially after the Tisha Torres fight, I trust nothing. I trust nothing. Even the Tiago Santos fight. You know why that fight's even scary? The Tiago Moises fight. You know why that fight's even scarier? Because fucking USADA is no longer here. Oh, no. I 100% I agree. Yeah. So I just, I fear, you know, as Public Enemy said, fear of a black planet. I fear a planet with no USADA. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, you know, and I fear a planet with UFC matchmaking trying to push the guys that they want to push. Do you fear it? I fear the shit out of it. I welcome it. I, I fear it enough not to pr to probably not touch this fight. I'm anarchy. playing value, and that's it. Raul Rosas is the lean. Fuck him. I think he's horrible. Next fight on the main card at 170 pounds, a.k.a. welterweight. For the men, we have a, not at, well, debuting for the weight class, Puna Hele Soriano going one-on-one -on -one with a, hey, haven't seen you in a while. Miguel Baeza, mm. Puna, nine and four, fighting out of Ow. I don't know how to pronounce that. Hawaii sounded like I was in pain, like I stepped on a Lego there. <laughs> Thirty-one <laughs> years old, and then we have Caramel Thunder, Miguel Baeza, ten and three, fighting out of Florida. Thirty-one years old, S Soriano. I'm a little disappointed in. Yeah, he's he lost to Dustin Stolfus, who's in this later on this card, and he lost me a ton of money because I thought he was going to do dirty things to him. It's not just that. It's it's Soriano is one of these guys where it's like you're Hawaiian, but he doesn't have the uh, he doesn't have the legendary Hawaiian chin. No, and he doesn't have the legendary Hawaiian IQ. No, and he doesn't have the legendary. Hawaiian takedown defense. He might have been born there, but he's a foreigner, is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying that somebody might want to look into it. <laughs> Puna is uh, making the attempt because he's lost two in a row and uh, four out of his last five. He's moving down in weight and I think an attempt to kind of uh, revitalize his career, save his career, rejuvenate his career. Then we got Mael, Mega Mael, Miguel. Yeah. By Aza, Caramel Thunder. I think he's reeking, by the way. I need to confirm that. I'm going to throw that out there. I think he's reeking. I need. I would I would love that he... he you know what? Hold down, he, my, boy. He Hold might down be my boy. Hold down my boy. Honorary reeking. I'm going to say that for now, but we'll confirm that later. Uh, By Aza, also on a uh, three-fight skid himself. Uh, his last loss probably being his worst loss against uh, Andre Fialo, where I think he just got caught. Like Fialo went and get, 
I think kind of get like a semi clinch and then just uppercutted the shit like infinite uppercuts. He just hit him like the bam, 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 and just straight knocked him down. I think this is a bounce, ah, maybe not bounce back fight. This is a this is a get right fight for one of these guys, and I think it's gonna be Baez. I think Baez is just way more talented of a fighter. I agree. Even with Puna moving down, he's gonna be the smaller dude significantly 511 to 62 72 inch reach to 74 inch reach i think baeza is just a better striker and i think he's just a better overall fighter give me baeza to win this fight i don't trust soriano too many holes in his defense too many holes in his iq he hasn't really he hasn't really gotten better at, since he's been in the ufc and you want the honest truth this fight for me i'm gonna lean baeza too but for a lot of reasons this fight's a big fucking stay away and the reason being is because Baez has a questionable chin too. Um, he's gotten clipped by big punches, granted, but Soriano is not like a soft puncher. He ca if he catches you, he'll knock you the fuck out. But yes. if you're asking me, Baez is the younger talent that they're trying to push here. Um, there's no line available on this fight, but what I will say is I think um, I think Baez is the lead. So let's go with Caramel Thunder. Hopefully the honorary Bori, Bori, Bori that's actually Boricua. Wait, I got a line for you here. I want, I want your opinion. Who do you think is the favorite? Probably Baeza. Yes, he is. He is uh, minus 150, and the comeback on Soriano is plus 130. That makes sense. So I'm okay with that line. I'm kind of I'm kind of fine with that line. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that line. Caramel Thunder. Next fight on the main card at 185, a.k.a. middleweight. We have the Hulk Bruno Ferreira. Go on one-on-one -on -one with your boy, Mike, Dustin Stofus. Do you see the genius at work? Do you see how I did that? How did you do that? I did. I, I put, you know, the last fight together with this fight. <laughs> you know, I made the words connect and I made it make sense. You made the math make sense. That's what you did. There, I right? connected one horrible fighter to another horrible fighter. You understand what I'm saying? I understand what you're saying. Stolfus. Hold on. Let me, let me, let me. And Soriano. I don't think Stolfus is that bad, but he's ass, bro. Bruno Ferreira. Uh, the Hulk, 11 and 1, fighting out of Brazil, hailing from Brazil, 31 years old. Stolfus, 15 and 5, fighting out of Pennsylvania, 32 years old. I like Ferreira here. <laughs> I do. I, oh, yeah, I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> now, I mean, listen, I think there's, if you're asking me, I think there's more question marks behind Ferreira because, I mean, we haven't seen him really go the distance in the UFC yet. Um, I think he's fought the like. I think to be if you're asking me, this might be a step down in competition compared to who he's already a, fought. Absolutely. I mean, he cleaned out my boy Hobo Cop. <laughs> then he went and got cleaned out by New Sultan, who just got cleaned out by my boy New Mansa Joaquin Buckley. And then he came back and then did another cleaning out of I don't remember his name. Who did he clean out? Oh, Phil Hawes. Yeah. Who, I we, mean. We missed out on that it, opportunity. This sucks for Phil Hawes. I think Phil Hawes is literally. One of the most talented me, guys in the UFC. I think I might have taken. I might have put a bet on Phil Hawes. Yeah, you did. Because uh, yeah. he's, he was, he's literally better everywhere. The problem with Phil Hawes is that he's just got no chin. Dustpan chin. Dust. <laughs> Dustpan. Wet paper bag. It's bad. That's the kind of durability we're talking about when it comes to Phil Hawes. Yeah, Ferrez fought the way better comp. Dustin Stolfus, I think the problem with Dustin Stolfus, I think he just takes way too long to download. He's like a Windows PC from like 1998. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like he was good for the time. But, you know. Time has passed. The future's now, old man. Yes, it is. Yes. <laughs> this guy, I, 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 I'm going to jump in. I, I think Stolfus is shit. And okay. I think this is, this is an execution. I think Perez is going to do what the fuck he wants. Um, he picked his shots pretty good against Phil Hawes and found it and landed. I think I think Stolfus, if he went to his wrestling, which I don't think is even that bad, it could be pretty interesting. But that being said, I mean, Ferreira's definitely have the he's he's got he's got the power. I think he's gonna have the higher output in terms of volume. Um, I think on the ground, I don't I don't think he's terrible. No, he's not. And I think we haven't seen his jujitsu, but I'm pretty sure he, I mean, listen, maybe I'm being a little, you know, by not biased. What's the, uh, what's the word here? I'm being a little stereotypical here when I think, when I say, I think he's got jujitsu. He's Brazilian. He's got to have some jujitsu, right? He's, he's okay on the floor. He's not lost. I think the, the only thing I don't like about him 
Personally, I think like sometimes I feel like he moves in slow motion, but I think he's just because he's got so much fucking muscle mass. This guy, you know what I'm saying? I agree, but he's pretty explosive too. But Sto- like, Sophus isn't fucking, you know, he ain't nah. grease lightning. You know what I'm saying? No, nah. this man ain't the Flash. So this guy is not the guy that Mickey and Rocky was talking about. No, you know, he's like, not the chicken. No, no, it, it, he, this, he might be cooked chicken, but he wasn't the chicken that Rocky was chasing. With. No, he's gonna be cooked chicken in this fight. <laughs> like uh, he's gonna get fucked up. I, I I think there's a complete mismatch, and I think this is this might be a, a way to get uh, give Dustin Stolfus his walking papers. So what if you beat up Soriano? I the Soriano was the favorite in that fight. Think about that. Yeah, Soriano, and Soriano was a was, big and, favorite in and, that fight, and I lost money in that fight. Yeah. That that was the fight that showed me all with Soriano. Fuck him. Stolfus looked like a fucking five star. I don't even like talking star. about. I don't even like talking <laughs> about fighters like that. Like, cause you know, it sounds like you have um. Some agendas, brother. I'm just being honest. Maybe man. some biases. Yeah, you got to be honest with what you're watching, and I, I don't think so. I don't think Soriano's good, and I don't think Stolfus is good. And that's why I said you seen the genius at work there because I thought ahead and I thought about this ahead of time, and I said Dawson, Dustin Stolfus is shit, shit, and I think Soriano's cheeks. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and what comes out of cheeks? Shit. Yeah. <laughs> so my thing is, I think I think Bruno's gonna rinse him. End of story. I'm surprised the line's not wider, to be frank. But, you know, I get it because of the wrestling, but I think this is like a, a market correction. Pick a Stolfus, um, because Stolfus looked good against Soriano. But then um, Bruno, I think he had like a bad moment against Hawes, and then he just, yeah, I think actually Hawes had a moment in, or two in that fight. No, for, yeah, Hawes looked decent in it. And, and then and got, it was, and it was just, a decent back and forth. And, and then, then just got caught. Yeah, he just yeah. got caught, I think, with like five seconds left in the first round. With that, you have to equate Dustin Stolfus's talent to Phil Hawes's. And I'm sorry. Yeah, it's I'm sorry. It's, it's yeah. night and day, man. It's night and day. Ferreira, knockout. Next fight on the card at men's middleweight, we have, at as the featured bout, a returning Julian, the Cuban Missile Crisis Marquez. Going one-on-one with Zach, the Savage. Or it's just Savage, Reese. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! No, 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 hold on. Let's not totally disrespect here. I, that, that, this, unlike the last fight, this is to their fight IQ, skill, and gas stinks. 100%. Marquez, 9-4, and four, fighting out of Vegas, 34 years old. Reese, fighting out of Shiner, Texas, 6-1 and one overall, 30 years old. Marquez's last fight, Marquez's couple last fights, I mean, he's been trying to, like, you know, ch- change his game up, you know, become a little more of a calculated striker, shit like that, because, I mean, you know. Can't be a punching bag your whole career. His, his chin ain't what it used to be. No. That's all I'm going to say. Zach Reese. Was perfect until he made his UFC debut against Cody Brundage. Now, give me a sec. Listen, listen. Here. I knew you said not to breathe into the mic, but I had to breathe there. My lungs felt compressed there. I had to release now, some tension. I, I don't know if you recall how Brundage won that fight. I think he slammed him, right? Brundage won via slam. Now, and... Funny enough, that was the second slam KO that on night. that card because Selecki also got slammed. By um, Jokara Close. J- yep. I don't want to say that was flukish, but... His, his, his submissions are good. Zach I, I Reese, there. 100%, in my opinion, was the better fighter. He just, for some reason, didn't want to let go of the... Uh, I think he had him in a... Armbar, yeah, a, no, yeah, and a triangle, yeah, a tri- yeah, it was something. But the, the thing is, when you have a submission guy, submission guys don't let go of submissions because they're yeah. confident they can get you until they get thrown on the head or they like leg lock is that go and they go for your legs and they get punched in the face. It's the same idea. Yeah, this guy has got all the intangibles. Uh, when it comes to the physical shit, my man is six four. He's got the seventy seven inch reach. I think he's got power. I think his jujitsu is actually pretty decent. I think this fight is a setup fight. It's the featured fight. It's the featured fight for a reason. I think they're trying to get Zach Reese back on the horse. They're going to get him against Julie Marquez, who, listen, has fallen off the horse and many horses have trampled over him. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like, they, they already reached pretty low when they decided to match him up against uh, Cody Brundage. And they were like, who else do we have down there? So, you know, they start digging a little deeper into the little monkey barrel they got. And they were like, oh, shit, we stuck a Marquez here. I like Julian. 
And I think he can he can bring it. He's not going to lay down. That being said, this fight doesn't go. A hundred percent. That being said, I think Zach is going to use his uh, physical advantages. On top of the fact that my man, I think, is going to have the faster hands. And I think he's going to do whatever he wants to Marquez. I think it's going to be by KO. But I think inside the distance, I think Zach reaches the side here. I think Zach. I'm, I'm proud of Zach. Because I think Zach's going to fuck. <laughs> Way to what go, movie is Zach. That? Yeah. What movie is that? Oh, that's Zach and Mary make a porn. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. Zach's going to fuck. <laughs> Zach fucks. That was Get super ready necessary. For super necessary. <laughs> Fucking that, hilarious. That's my prediction for this fight. Zach is going to fuck. People going to bleed. It's going to get cut open. And somebody might die. Violence, violence, violence. I'm going to lean Reese here for all the reasons that my brother articulately put together, but violence and unders are the play for this fight for sure. Thank you for the articulate. Yeah. I mean, this because is... Because I said Zach Fox. Yeah. No, that was fucking phenomenal. <laughs> I, I, was like, Damn. I was like, Dan, where the fuck did this go? Like, where, where is this from? Way to go, Zach. Yeah. yeah. Way, way to fuck. Way to fuck. Delivered by the great, the late, great Jason Muse. Well, not even late because he's still Whoa, alive. Which late? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You killed my man off? He's still alive? <laughs> the great Jason Muse. <laughs> the great Jason Muse. Yeah, I like Zach, but I'm, from a betting standpoint, violence. Oh, 100%. I think that's the way to play this fight. The unders so. are definitely going to hit on this fight. But I have nothing else to add because I was with the Zach fuck to, you know, explanation, um, explanation point this thing off. We're good. <laughs> that's how we played it. <laughs> Co-main event, light heavyweight. Uh, I need you to cue up the old brother because. Oh, brother, we got, this guy stinks. We got. A battle. This is the co-main event, and we got the battle of of the struggle here. The old versus the mid. Dominic Reyes, <laughs> the devastator, who's been looking like he's been the devastated, by the way. Agreed. Going one-on-one -on -one with Dustin Jacoby, the Han Yak. Reyes, 12 and 4, fighting out of California, 34 years old. Jacoby. 19, 8, and 1 fighting out of Denver, Colorado, 36 years old. Why is this the co-main event? I don't know. Violence. Uh, this is pretty much, it's like Battle of the Mid. It's like Battle of the Washed, if I'm being completely honest. Who's, who's more washed? And it's sad because I think if you're asking me, these guys in their primes are fucking, they're phenomenal. I right. mean, Dustin Jacoby's arguably one of the best kickboxers in the game. In his heyday, Reyes, one of the I one of the best strikers I think I've seen. Like, not even just strikers, because I think it's kind of like a pigeonhole. But like he's he one beat the, he beat John Jones, and in his let's like, just, let's in just, his peak, man, that that guy had you know he was showing off some fucking crazy talent. He beat John Jones, in my opinion. That that was the one fight John Jones clearly lost, and the judges kind of saved John there. He was also working the shit out of jury until he got caught with the elbow. Until he got caught, correct. Ah, oh, man, this one, I mean, Reyes is on a four-fight losing streak. D Dustin's lost three of his last four. Three, three of his last five. Five, sorry, yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, three of his last four. You're not wrong either, so. Yeah. But, man, I don't, I don't know where I want to go with this fight. What are the odds on this fight? I'm, I'm curious. Um, because I didn't even, I didn't even look. Plus okay. 180 for Dom Reyes and Justin, Dustin Jacoby at minus 218. It might be a dog or pass spot, low key, because the people who have beaten Dustin, one's Azamat, who's undefeated, monster. The other two are guys that are big punchers. Dom does have power, bro. I, that's where I'm at with it, to be honest. I, but if you're asking me, the lean is definitely Dustin, because I, I trust him to make the better decisions. Has better takedown defense, can knows how to work on the outside for Alex Perea in kickboxing. I want, and, and if you're not a big, big puncher, like you're not gonna, you're not gonna fuck him up. I, I, I want to agree with you, but it's like, at the same time, when I look at, when I look back at Dustin Jacoby here, I feel like he's been fighting better recently. I, his Alonzo Menafield fight, he just got caught with big shots. You know, eh. I agree. I mean, they Kennedy and Jack Wu, th that was a setup fight for him. He should have won that fight, but he didn't. Uh, Jacoby did what he needed to do, and he got that boy out of there. Correct. Mirza Khanoff. Sounds like you're on the Jacoby side. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's tough because I, if you're asking me, I think Reyes is the better fighter. 
You know, skill for skill. But I just like, think we can't trust this guy anymore. I think he shot. I think after that, that that John Jones loss, man, I think that shit took his soul. This is a big step down with that said. I mean, he fucking got knocked out by Ryan Spann, though, man. This could be dope. I, Span, I put Spann on my fucking bread. <laughs> it's like poor man's food, man, but it's fucking delicious. Don't disrespect the, the thing don't is, disrespect Ryan Spann is not delicious. Pause. Hey, yo. My <laughs> thing is, though, if you're getting knocked out by Ryan Spann, it's not a good look, man. Unlike the span that I put on my bread, which is a good look. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> I, I don't know what the fuck you just said there, but <laughs> you made me kind of hungry for some reason. <laughs> it's tough, man. I, I actually don't. I don't know who to pick here. I'm leaning Dustin because I trust him to make the better decision. I feel like Dustin's a side, but like but at, my, this, at minus money is kind of it's crazy. crazy. Yeah, yeah. I, I think this fight's a big fucking stay away. I'm leaning Dustin, but it's a stay away. I'll pick Dustin as a pick. In terms of a bet, I do not know. I might come around to Reyes, depending on how everything looks, maybe on the scales and how he's talking. And the line. Because I do think he's the better he's the better overall talent. But man, it's just he's just hard to trust. He's hard to trust, man. And that chin I think is shot. Yeah. Yeah, I I I, I got Dustin. And I think Dustin is the rightful favorite in this fight for just being a better decision maker. Main event. Middleweight. Five rounder. Jared Cannonier, Nasruddin Imovov. We got the Killer Gorilla, mm. seventeen and six, fighting out of Alaska, forty years old. The Russian Sniper, Imovov, thirteen and four, fighting out of France, twenty eight years old. This fight, I, I go back and forth because, uh, listen, Imovov, he's the younger guy by a significant amount. Imovolf has the height advantage by a long shot. Cannoneer actually has the reach advantage, but by not that much. It's like 57 to 55. Two inches, I mean, it's important. Because, I mean, Cannoneer, his, his main weapons is his hands. Yeah. I'm going to throw this one to you first. I need you to guide me here because I feel like I want to go Imovolf because, I mean... Eventually, the young need to overtake the old, but not today. <laughs> That's what I think. <laughs> and this is where I'm at with this. I think Jerry Cannonier, and if it was a three round fight, I have concerns. This is a five round fight. He has time to download. He almost knocked out Vittoria's last fight because the criticism was that he wasn't pulling the trigger enough. Beat the brakes off him. We made money in that fight because I, I convinced you to bet him. Yeah. Low key. You did. And I think he can control him both with the wrestling. I really do. He's 40 years old, but this guy has peak conditioning, never out of shape, always in the gym. I think he has some of the most underrated fight IQ at middleweight. I think no one talks about that. I know he's 40, but he's fought as high as heavyweight. He's super explosive, super heavy handed. And I think he might be the better wrestler here. And I don't think Imovolf is going to be able to take him down. Um, Imovolf has shown to, to gas. In certain fights against Strickland did, but I, I get it. It's Strickland. Well, it was also a weight up. I understand yes. that he didn't have to cut weight. It was a light heavy. And it was a li- but it was also a short notice fight, and he was the one prepar- preparing for. I think uh, Chris Curtis. If yes. I'm correct. So no fucking excuses in my opinion. I think it's, I think that I think that's alarming. I think when he's not able to dictate his pace, he has trouble. Only thing that scares me about Cannon here is he's forty and that he has taken some time off from the octagon. But I think he sat out because I think he thinks he deserves the rightful title shot. And I think he does, too. I think he should be getting Drikus, in my opinion. But regret, with that said, I, lo- I love him as a dog shot here. Um, is he I, the actual dog in this fight? Yes, he he's plus 100. And 110. Wow, it's, a, it's a pick him up. And, and wow. I think, I think this is a little disrespectful. I, I really do. <laughs> plus 100 is disrespectful? Plus 110, actually. And you think he should be the favorite? I think he should be the favorite. Wow. I really do. I, I think this is... There's a little bit of recency bias with Imovolf uh, with his most recent win over um, Roman Delice, but you want the real? I think Jared fucks both these guys up. I think he, I think I think he does nasty things to Roman Delice. He didn't, he didn't look that impressive against Delice either. He that, yeah, it's tough. And by the way, who has the finishing upside in this fight? It's Cadenier. hundred percent. I, I do think Imovolf is like I think he's got all the uh, the tools. He's got all the tools to to like really be like a top five guy in this division. But it's like not a finisher. Not a finisher and not a guy who 
fares well with someone bullying him. I think Jared can work off his back foot, connect. He's fought right, fought the way better brand of competition. I think he's probably the better wrestler here. He's the more explosive wrestler. I think he's going to be the stronger guy. And after what he did to Vittori, I've never seen someone make Vittori look that bad. And we called that on this podcast. If you go back to that episode, I said, there's a good chance Jared might knock him the fuck out. And to be frank, if Vittori wasn't so tough, that fight would have been stopped. That fight arguably could have been stopped just on volume. Jared got so Jared got tired of hitting him. He got he'd take a round off from hitting him and hitting the motherfucker. Yeah. You know, so I'm on Jared here. I'm all over Jared. I I, I think Imavov, he got good movement, but he doesn't really have that pop, man. He doesn't really have that finishing ability. If it was three rounds, I'd be more on the Imavov side. I think Jared with five rounds is gonna have a lot more time to work and find a finish in this fight. And I think he's gonna make a point because he made a point the last fight against, I think, a better fighter in Vittori. This, I think, is a lesser fighter. I think it's a step down. So give me Jared, and that's probably why he accepted this fight too because I know he, I think he knows he's going to do dirty things to this boy. Give me Jared, probably even Jared ITD. And that does it for UFC. I don't know what they want to call it, either Louisville, Kentucky. They want to call it Kentucky. They just want to call it Louisville. I'm not too sure. But that's, you know, that's about it for Louisville, Kentucky. But we also have a little bit of boxing we want to cover here really quick before we go. This is two seconds, ladies and gentlemen. And who is fighting? This is going to be a top rank main event in Madison Square Garden. This is Xander Zayas on the Puerto Rican day to fight Patrick Teixeira, who I think is a Brazilian fighter. And uh, I'm going to throw it over to my brother because he is going to have the most simplest and of simple Break, breakdowns for this fight. Xander Zayas by however he wants. It's going to be a knockout. It's just when, to be frank. And that's what we're going to do a little more digging into. I think it's going to be early. I think this is a setup fight. I think they are um, top rank is trying to push this guy because they lost Berlanga. Well, actually, was Berlanga ever on top rank? I yeah, think he was. He, he yeah. was. Yeah, he was. And Berlanga, in my opinion. I don't I, think they lost Berlanga. I think they just said, hey, go, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Get out of here. Go ahead. You know, be, be food for Canelo because Canelo's going to kill him, in my opinion. Yeah, I hope the and, bag is worth it. And I, I don't like talking like this because Belanga is bored. He's from New York. I, I, I respect you, and bro. I, I'm, I still root for him, too, to yeah, be honest. I hold it, we hold it down, but you're, you're not... Uh, he's not that guy. You're not that guy. He's not that guy. You're not that guy. Uh, it's The guy is Xander Zayas and yes. Sabriel Matias, who will be fighting next week. next week. Yes. And I think if, if you're not... If you're Puerto Rican, particularly if you're Puerto Rican, you don't know who these guys are, Time to wake the fuck up and tune in. Do some homework, baby. And there's a beast via knockout. I'm gonna say early, but let me let me let me hold down to that. But that's the lean for now. The bet will be coming soon. Yeah, I don't disagree. I think this is gonna be a Zayas uh execution. Uh showcase fight. You know, it's Puerto Rican Day Parade in New York. There's gonna be Coquito and Pina Colada everywhere. <laughs> it's gonna get turned up. Uh <laughs> They ain't gonna have Zayas lose here. How he wins, I'm probably gonna, I'm probably also leaning finish, but uh, yeah, I mean, hey man, it's gonna be a good one for as long as it lasts. That's 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 what I got for this fight. And that just about does it for this podcast. You already know the business. Like, comment, subscribe, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Everybody enjoying these visuals right now. Please, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and also hit that notification bell to stay up to date. And for all of our audio listeners, Spotify, Apple, Google Podcast, you already know. Love you guys. Enjoy the UFC fights this weekend. It's not as name value as last weekend, but there are some decent matchups on this card. Enjoy the Xander Zayas execution, in my opinion. <laughs> love you guys. Bodies up. Everybody else down. <laughs> nah, I love all people. But everyone who tunes in, because it's not just bodies, we love you too. But it's body quad day weekend this weekend. So right. love you guys. Hold it down. Take it easy. Till next time. Holla at you.